Hi, my name is Karna Stukwig. I've had the opportunity to work with St. Luke's Health System since 2007 in a variety of different roles. I started my career as a registered dietitian at St. Luke's East, our hospital in Lee Summit. From there, I moved into a wellness coordinator position with the Lee Summit School District, which gave me the opportunity to work with the community. From there, I moved into my current position as a talent development partner with organizational development and talent management. And that's really been the culmination of all the skills that I grew through my clinical role and beyond. So one of the most exciting projects that I had the opportunity to work on was really driven by the pandemic and the innovation that we were able to explore as a result of that. Um, when hospitals and health systems had to start responding um, to the pandemic and determining how we were going to provide the best care to our patients, there was a lot of discussion about how technology can be a part of that. So our hospitalist group, group really uh, pushed forward the use of some interactive bots. We've been using them throughout our system um, for specialists to see patients that were at a, a great geographical distance. Um, and this was an opportunity to really think a little bit bigger about the use of those bots to see patients in our COVID unit. So the hospitalists were able to be at one location and use a bot in the patient's room to provide a full physical assessment and interactive conversation with the patient. So the bedside nurse who was already seeing the patient would wheel the bot into the room. The hospitalist or provider on the other end would be able to access that bot remotely and see and hear the patient. Um, the patient could see and hear the provider and communicate with them as well. Uh, the bedside nurse would help by doing the, um, doing the stethoscope and moving the bot so that the provider and the patient both had the best optimal, optimal um, vision of what was happening. And what we found was that this allowed our providers to see more patients because there wasn't that time of donning their PPE before going into the room and then the, uh, an extensive process of doffing the PPE coming out of the room. So they were able to see more patients a little bit more efficiently. And what we also found most importantly from the patient end is that they were very satisfied with the experience uh, because they were able to see their provider. Um, they were able to have a great conversation and, you know, in, in, a, in a pandemic, of course, uh, a lot of our providers are wearing full PPE masks, goggles, and it can be hard for our patients to find that connection. So when the providers were on the screen, they didn't have those masks on, so the patients felt that there was a little bit more human connection. Healthcare is a rare, really varied field. You know, we often make the com comparison that large healthcare systems are like small cities. We have such a variety of roles available, um, you know, clinical roles, non-clinical roles, administrative roles, food service, you know, we've got baristas. Um, so, so there's really no one skill set that everyone in healthcare has. What I will say, though, and I think this has been made even more apparent, is that there are some foundational skills without which it is really hard to be successful. So if I had to name those skills, I would say being a really proactive and clear communicator. Um, in healthcare especially, especially, we don't really have that opportunity to, um, to give in to poor communication or a lack of communication. When we do that, patients' lives are at risk. So one of the skill sets that I always recommend people continually invest in and develop is their ability to engage in clear communication. Um, the other thing that I think is just um, incredibly important is the ability to constantly challenge your thinking and to challenge the status quo to be innovative. Again, we found this during the pandemic that it, it gave us an opportunity to lean into innovation more quickly than we might have otherwise, um, purely because of necessity. We had to do it. And I think what we'll take away from that is that we can do a lot of things that we used to think were impossible. So if, if you have a fixed mindset that the way we've done things is the way that we should continue to do things, it's going to be really hard to be successful in healthcare. You have to foster that growth mindset of there's always a better way to do it um, and we can explore that. The other thing that I think is so crucial in healthcare as, as any other field is the ability to work collaboratively within your own team and within other teams. So one of the uh, most important parts of our um, robot project was that there were multiple teams working together to make that happen quickly and successfully 
always with an eye on patient outcomes and patient satisfaction. So um, there's really no place for silos. There's no place for an inward mindset where you're focused on your own goals. You have to constant, constantly be asking, um, what, what are we trying to accomplish and how can I support that? So that's a skill to start practicing right now. When in, when in, whenever you're in a group or working with a team, ask yourself, what are we trying to accomplish and what's my role in helping to support that? So what I consider to be the best and most enjoyable part about working in healthcare is the endless opportunities to try new things, to problem solve, to make things better, and most importantly, to work with people. Um, this is one of those careers where we're never going to not work directly with people in some capacity, right? Um, and so I think the people who get into healthcare get into it because they want they they want to help. We're helpers. Um, we want to make people's lives a little better than they were before they walked through our doors or interacted with us in any number of ways. Um, and so if you're creative and innovative and a problem solver. There is never a shortage of things that you can do to improve the care that we're providing to our patients. And that, uh, you know, you might think that's overwhelming, but actually it's endlessly exciting because we can, uh, there's no limit to how we can continue to grow and improve with our patients' best interests in mind. If you're in high school and considering a career in healthcare, I would really encourage you to explore um, beyond just clinical roles. You know, when we think about healthcare, we think about nurses and doctors, um, and, and they are the backbone of our organization. We exist to support the work they do. And it takes such a uh, variety of strengths and skill sets to help us all be successful. So I encourage you to start um, identifying what it is that you love doing, what you're passionate about, and then talk to people in healthcare about what the need is for that. It may not even be a need that we've identified yet, but that's clearly a future need. You know, um, five years ago, we may not have ever thought that we were going to be seeing patients via robot, uh, and here we are. So I would, I would encourage you to continue to identify those things about which you are passionate that you want to spend your career doing, um, and then talk with people in healthcare about what that looks like and how we can support you to do more of that. All right, right now we are outside of the MRI scan room. We can't take the camera in there because it's a very large magnet that would suck the camera in. So we will look at it through the glass here. So with MRI, this uses a magnet to obtain the images rather than using radiation like the other fields. It is a lot like CT in the fact that you can get 3D images and do slices, but again, there's no radiation used. So with MRI, it's gonna take a lot of the skills that the other radiology departments do. Lots of science, a lot of physics are involved with MRI. These scans take a lot longer than the other modalities do, which does mean that you have a lot more different patient care options. A lot of your patients are claustrophobic. They don't like tight spaces. So a lot of working with the, the patients to make sure that they're comfortable. Um, there's a lot of safety issues concerning MRI. If you have metal implants in your body or things like that, we have to be very careful about who we allow in the rooms. Um, their day-to-day, -day, they're very long exams. Most of them take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. So they're often doing much of the computer work while the patient is lying in the scanner. So the education requirements for an MRI technologist are very similar to other fields in radiology. A lot of these technologists start in diagnostic radiology and cross-train back into MRI. Um, every modality that you cross-train into, we take an additional board or a test to make sure that you're certified to do that field properly. So I'm Davis Wynn. I'm a CT technologist here at St. Luke's on the Plaza. Um, I started off at Northwest where I did the 2 plus 2 program with Northwest and St. Luke's. So I started here at St. Luke's as a student. I got hired on at X-Ray over in the diagnostic department. And then I've kind of worked my way over here into CT, kind of cross training. And uh, so yeah, um, most importantly, I think just patient care. If you like patient care, this is definitely for you. More so imaging, it's pretty simple, I feel like. So the patient care is where you kind of have to have like a passion for, I feel like. If you're motivated, self-motivated, you know, no one's here over your shoulder pushing you to do stuff. It's when something happens and you get a stat order, you just got to get up and do it. So that's kind of, 
if you feel like you kind of fit that line, I think you'll do great. Yeah, I think it's just a lot of like, you know, we do a lot of moving, we do a lot of helping walk, walking patients. Um, there's some patients who are very kind of emotional when they get here. So it's kind of just having a level of understanding of their and kind of getting on their level at the, at the moment when they get here. Uh, favorite thing from my department is just the teamwork and the camaraderie here. I think everybody gets along, everybody gets up and helps one another. And, you know, I haven't had a bad experience since I've been here with that. So. Hi, my name is Kevin Morrison. I am the lead sonographer here on the Plaza, St. Luke's. Um, I do ultrasound pretty much all day of, of some babies, abdomens, our carotid arteries, legs, a little bit of everything. Science is a big one. Physics um, is what everybody loves. Um, but science, a little bit of math, um, not, not that much, but yeah, math would be helpful. Um, and some artistic skills. Biggest strength is uh, just being able to visualize what you see on screen um, and be able to explain it in detail to a physician. Yes, this is the ultrasound machine that we use here. Um, it has, you can see the color flow in a carotid artery there on the screen now. So it's uh, going, blood, taking blood flow from the heart up through into the brain. Um, but this, this is one of the machines we use all day long. My name is Laura Embers. I'm a physical therapist by training. I work here at St. Louis Hospital in an administrative capacity. I'm the director of rehabilitation and cardiac rehab at St. Louis Hospital in Kansas City. I've been with St. Louis for 40 years. I started out as a physical therapist here and then moved up in administrative roles in various capacities into my current position. Um, my physical therapy degree was from the University of Kansas after uh, undergrad at, in Lawrence, Kansas, at the, at the school there, and then I moved to the medical center, KU, uh, KU Med Center, and um, received my bachelor's degree in physical therapy. Now I have a master's degree in healthcare administration, but I want to talk with you about physical therapy and a special project that I'm working on here at St. Luke's in physical therapy. It has to do with stroke care, um, a patient who might have had a, a brain brain bleed or lack of blood supply in a certain area of their brain and the uh, functional deficits that patient might have after that type of an injury or incident. We see a lot of stroke patients at St. Luke's Hospital and a lot of those patients do have a functional deficit that we feel like we can. Physical therapy role is so interesting if you are, if you have a knack for or an interest in anatomy, physiology, kinesiology, if you have an interest in service to others and helping people progress with their functional capacities, if you have an interest in healthcare, um, physical therapy is a great position to get in. It is very rewarding because you do find that you're of great value to a patient as they progress and get better and are able to do things um, even after one session that uh, they maybe weren't able to do prior to working with you. So the rewards are amazing, uh, and in healthcare, the, the service you have with others and the giving of your time and your talents, that is extremely rewarding. So when you are interested in a healthcare field, you might lean towards a certain area, like anatomy or kinesiology. And so the skill and the talent you need are just the interest in learning about those things and in how you can translate the knowledge from those classes and, and um, uh, areas into practice where you then use, the, use that knowledge to help you help patients. Um, really, healthcare interest, um, interest in serving others, and then maybe a special interest in anatomy, kinesiology, physiology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what I enjoy the most are the rewards and the um, uh, looks of and voices of appreciation that we get from our patients because they notice and appreciate all the work we do with them and how hard we work with them. 
Um, it means a lot to them. It is so rewarding when, because of something that you do has helped the patient progress, is able to do something that they couldn't do before. It is extremely rewarding in that regard. So when you first look into healthcare, of course, there are so many opportunities and unique specialty areas. And if you're someone who likes to work with people and likes to really know their story, their background, then physical therapy might be something you really might like. And you could explore nursing school first, occupational therapy school, uh, speech therapy, physical therapy. You can explore all of those different things. You might even consider exploring medical school. But as you hone down and then get into what really might mean something to you in your future, um, those are all the bases that I would say you would start with. Just a global approach to interest in healthcare and then hone it down to a unique specialty area. Hi, this is Laura Embers, and I'm a physical therapist and an administrator, actually, with St. Luke's Hospital. And I have a pretend patient with me today, but she's also a physical therapist, and I want her to talk to you about her background. So I'm Brittany B. I'm a physical therapist. I've been a physical therapist for five years now, St. Luke's for one year. My favorite thing about patient care is getting patients out of pain, working through the pain with them, and getting them to move better. So Brittany has agreed to be my patient, and we're going to pretend that she has broken her ankle. And so, Brittany, if you'll sit down and just act like you're in a lot of pain. <laughs> and we're pretending that she's broken her ankle and also that she's all, already been trained in how to use crutches. But we think that her, for her specific issue, that she might like to use this scooter instead. Now, she's broken her ankle, poor thing, and she's um, going to be needing to get around and be able to walk in the hallways and get around at work. So she, but she can't put weight on her broken leg, her broken ankle, but she can't put weight on her knee. So this scooter is a great strategy for her. So uh, Brittany, we're gonna work on sit to stand and actually let me um, put these brakes on. Okay, now sit to stand without putting weight on your leg. Scooch over there, there you go. And now I've got you by this gate belt so that there's, you can't fall or anything, I'll be holding you. So now we're gonna move towards the camera. So this is one of the strategies that a physical therapist would use for gait, All right? Now, let's pretend Brittany has a different diagnosis. So step off of that, Brittany. And now let's pretend that Brittany has a, sorry, thank you. Uh, let's pretend that she has a balance problem and that when she tries to walk, she just can't keep her balance. And so we want to work on her balance a little bit. Again, I have this handy gate belt on so that I can protect her. Step backwards just a little bit. Okay. Now, have a seat. We'll make you safe. You stay right here. And let's work on some balance by having you step up. Once you stand back up, I'm going to have you step on this. And then I'm going to challenge you to step on that. And then you keep your balance while I do some pushing. And you try to feel that in your legs and in your feet. Work on your proprioception a little bit. So this is just an example of some of the activities that a physical therapist would use for working with a patient who has an injury or an illness or some other kind of deficit where their function is compromised. And we help them move back to more functional activities in a safe and efficient way. My name is Amir John Seuss. I'm the director of the environmental services, housekeeping at the St. Luke's Hospital of Kansas City. Um, I've been here at uh, St. Luke's for over eight years, uh, and my job is to oversee the daily operation of the housekeeping department on a daily basis. Uh, we are here, especially during the COVID time, as we are all going through the new norm. Uh, we have increased our cleaning and sanitizing of the hospital and uh, working on uh, making sure that all patients and visitors are in the area of the same room, so all in good hands and clean and sanitized uh, areas. Uh, my job is uh, to uh, hire and uh, train people uh, for uh, cleaning the hospital. We're always looking for good people with good attitude. 
Uh, as long as you have the stomach of cleaning vomit, urine, blood, and feces, and you have the personality, we can train you guys. Uh, it's a great job uh, to work in the uh, facilities that uh, people care for each other, and especially uh, as patients are in the room, uh, you can talk to them and interact with them. Patients like uh, they don't have uh, comfort in the hospital as the people are coming, doctors are coming with the bad news for them, or the lab person comes in and stick them in the middle. Uh, when they see the housekeeper, uh, we can make their days. Uh, we come in, introduce ourselves, we tell them why we are here. We'll have a conversation going on with them on a daily basis uh, to see how they are doing and keep them uh, kind of involved in the hospital and with the team and uh, just to talk to them. If you have the personality of you know, the customer service, this is a job for, for you. Uh, again, uh, especially at St. Luke's, great place to get care. Great place to give care. Great place place to interact with the patients. Um, housekeeping is uh, one of those positions that you can start in the health system and move on to the next position. You will get to know a lot of people in the health system, a lot of people around you. You get used to looking at what uh, the hospitals are offering. Uh, we have had uh, 18, 19 years old uh, called uh, high school graduate come to the hospital, started here, and in six months to a year find a passion for something else to do in the hospital setting and move to the next level and uh, move to the next chapter of their life. Um, as you see, this is a, a dog room, clean and sanitized, ready for the patient. Uh, it's set up uh, to have our next patient to come in. Uh, we make sure that this room is turned on clean, which means that from top to bottom, uh, it's clean and sanitized. Uh, bed is made, uh, bathroom is clean, room is done and clean, uh, ready for our patient to come in. Nurses bring the patient in, and uh, the, uh, after the patient is settled down, uh, we start our daily cleaning on a daily basis. Our housekeepers are as, uh, trained to come to the patient rooms twice a day. One in the morning, they come in, uh, introduce themselves, who they are, that's going to be their job, their unit today, and uh, they pick up the trash, if there's a patient needs anything, um, they will take care of it immediately. And they will come back in a few hours to clean and sanitize the room, uh, which takes about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on uh, the patient and also the housekeeper, uh, because again, they are having some interaction going on. Uh, as the housekeeper is cleaning the room, it tells the patient uh, what they are doing. Um, in the high touch area where the patient is in the room, the area that the patients, visitors, uh, nurses touch a lot, uh, that needs to be clean and sanitized. So. Uh, we are now moving germs from one group to another group. And also, we make sure our patients are in good hands. Cellux is a great place to work at. Uh, I have been here for over eight years, and uh, it's, it's awesome. They, they, they take care of their employees, they take, take care of their visitors, they take care of their patients. Um, the uh, teamwork that's in their hospital, that's uh, what it makes my day. Uh, I can have a uh, if I need something, I, if I go to someone, they're always there. They do open arms, they answer your questions. Um, it's, a, it's, it's one of those places that you enjoy not only working for your department, you work with your department. Good afternoon, I'm Marva. I am housekeeping associate at St. Luke's Hospital. I have been here a year and nine months now, almost two years. And our responsibilities are to keep up the upkeep of the patient's room, which you can see the patient is out of the room right now on a procedure, but we still go about our daily cleaning even though they're not in here. Um, we like to do a lot of hand sanitizing for um, the germs, dusting for the germs also, and in order to keep uh, a patient happy, we would like to interact with the patient, make sure they're happy, um, keep them conversations because they do not have their families here with them. So we like to just keep them company and happy while they are here. Um, the skills needed, people person. The customers, ooh, the patients, love to hear a person's voice. It keeps them occupied. It passes the time by. 
Uh, it makes them feel loved that someone can actually just stay in and talk to them instead of just coming in and going right back out the room. Not being polite. Politeness is the key to keeping the patient happy. I love the people, first of all, and then I like just keeping busy, just keeping busy. And I like talking to the patients. You, you learn a lot. You get a lot of laughs from them. It's enjoyable. It makes the day go real fast. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the first thing we actually do when the patient is out of the room, we do a lot of the high dusting because we cannot do it when the patient is in the room. So we have an extension and a duster, and we would just go along the ceilings, the baseboards, anything, the clocks, anything that's high in the high area that we cannot reach and knock the dust down, touch areas, and that is where everything that needs to be sanitized from where everyone was touching. And we actually use that, go about doing that with the Oxavir wipes. It is to sanitize, it's the sanitation for the rooms. And every surface that you wipe, it is good to use one wipe on it. So every surface that you wipe, just use one wipe and wipe it down. Anything you, you know. All the surface areas that are going to be touched. And basically, after we finish these areas, because we're going to go around the complete room with the wipes, wiping down the um, high touch areas. Um, after we're done in this area, wiping everything down, we will continue on going into the bathroom, in which we would use the wipes also, and we would use the crew that is to clean, actually clean the toilet, keep everything sanitized. 